Straight ahead on CCX News, making travel safer for truckers. The technology that aims to lighten the load at rest stops. Plus, something that hasn't happened in more than 70 years. Blending love and forgiveness all into one story. But first, a new plan to tackle the prescription opioid epidemic. It needs to be easy, just as easy to get help as it is to get heroin or prescription pills. CCX News starts right now. Governor Dayton and a bipartisan group of lawmakers unveil a plan to take on the prescription opioid epidemic. Hello and thanks for joining us. I'm Alexandra Renslow. And I'm Shannon Slatten. The number of people dying from opioid overdoses is on the rise. In 2016, 395 people died, an 18% increase from 2015. In Hennepin County alone, there were 162 opioid-related deaths last year, a 47% increase from 2015. The rising numbers are why lawmakers revealed a plan to tackle the crisis by charging drug companies a penny on each milligram of active ingredient in a prescription pain pill. That money, about $20 million each year, would fund prevention and opioid treatment programs. For State Senator Chris Eaton of Brooklyn Center, the issue is personal. Her daughter, Arielle Eaton Wilson, died of a heroin overdose in 2007. Eaton believes drug companies owe reparations to help reverse the epidemic. I know that the uh, pharmaceutical companies had the data, they had the studies that showed them that these drugs were dangerously addictive. And they did pursue um, trying to get doctors to prescribe them more to make money. And whether their intention was to addict the, the uh, populace or not, that's what happened. The penny a pill fee proposal had bipartisan support Wednesday at the Capitol. The new legislative session begins next week. In New Hope, nearly half of the city's businesses that sell tobacco products were caught selling to minors. New Hope police say eight of the city's 20 businesses failed a routine tobacco compliance check. In each of the cases, chewing tobacco was sold to a minor. It is illegal in Minnesota to sell a tobacco product to anyone under 18. Some cities, like Plymouth, St. Louis Park, and Edina have approved ordinances raising the legal sales age to 21. All of the New Hope businesses cited must pay a $250 fine and undergo training to avoid a license suspension. The Brooklyn Park City Council may consider changing zoning laws along Highway 610 to accommodate a Mercedes dealership. The stretch of roadway is now home to some corporate headquarters, manufacturers, and some hotels. A Mercedes dealership contacted the city several months ago, wanting to build along Highway 610 in order to reach a growing number of consumers in the northern suburbs. There's currently no land zone for a car dealership in that area, but the city doesn't want the property to turn into a string of car dealerships. Because that's not the intent of the corridor. We want it to be a jobs uh, rich part of our community. And uh, the Mercedes dealership said that they would be bringing 40 to 50 jobs initially and then perhaps growing from there. Last worst session, the city council directed staff to work with the dealer on finding suitable land that could possibly be rezoned. In Brooklyn Center, yet another car dealership is going in. The Luther Company received final approval from the city council to build a Luther Mazda and Mitsubishi dealership. This location will replace a former pool and spa store and a former bus storage facility. In case you haven't noticed, Luther has quite a presence in Brooklyn Center. To the north, there's a Luther Volkswagen. To the east, there's a Luther Buick and GMC dealership, as well as a Luther Chevrolet dealership. Then, across the street, there's a Luther Toyota dealership, and north of that, there's a Luther Honda dealership. 2016 was a record year for car sales across the U.S., with sales dipping slightly in 2017. Anyone who is a truck driver knows that fatigue is a tough part of the job. And that is why Minnesota is one of eight states that's installing technology at rest areas to help drivers find parking spaces when they need to get off the road. We get more from Eric Nelson. We think it's a win-win situation for everybody. Get tired truckers off the road. Safer situation. They are visible every day of the year. Truck drivers are constantly carrying freight across U.S. highways. The job is a grind, and when it's time to power down for the night, 
parking isn't easy. Finding safe, reliable parking is difficult. They can spend over a half hour looking for parking spots. It's mid-morning here at the Elm Creek rest stop off I-94. Right now, there are plenty of parking spaces available, but come tonight, they will fill up quickly. The ruling is you're not in a rest area by 7 or a truck stop by 7, you're sleeping on the ramps because there is not enough parking spots. Well, they got to get in before their fellow truckers try to get in there too because it's kind of a race to get to the spot. Because of this parking crunch, MnDOT will soon be using technology in seven Twin Cities rest areas that tells truckers where there is room to park their rig. That would be a great thing, uh, I guess, so we can decide where we are parking. Rather, yeah, it would be a great deal, yeah. That way you can keep rolling and find something. If you keep going and it's full all the time, you're, you're wasting time. This cutting edge idea uses a magnetometer. We call it a puck. That is buried in a parking space. When a truck pulls in, the puck picks up the metal and sends a signal to a nearby control box, which relays the info to a sign on the interstate. We will be able to tell the truckers with a sign down the road how many spots are available so they can make an informed decision as to whether they want to pull it and park. The signs should be up and running by early summer and will hopefully ease the search for those coveted parking spots. Veer Schron was recently hauling hay from Manitoba to Wisconsin. He likes the new technology. Also, we can uh, let the other drivers know, like uh, we are on a call with other drivers, like I'm parking here, these, there are these many spots and everything, you know, so it will be better for them. In Maple Grove, I'm Eric Nelson, CCX News. MnDOT says this will be a seamless transition and the signs will look the same in the seven other states. Calling all artists, your artwork could soon be seen throughout downtown Osseo. The city council has agreed to hold a banner contest to update the ones it currently has. The banners on Central Avenue have been up for about five years and are beginning to show their age. As an extra incentive for artists, Osseo will award $100 to the winning design. Entries are due March 22nd and the city plans to put the new banners up the first week of May. Still ahead, well-rounded would be an understatement to describe this week's standout student. Meet this Champlin Park student up next. And plus, Cooper's girls basketball team shoots for a season sweep against Benilde St. Margaret's. The highlights are coming up a little later in sports. But first, turning cooler, but nothing too frigid, we dip back into the 20s on Thursday. Welcome back. This year, Ash Wednesday fell on Valentine's Day, and that hasn't happened in more than 70 years. This means Christians ushered in the solemn season of Lent with a day celebrating love. We have Valentine candy, too, and heart glasses for the kids. <laughs> Maple Grove Lutheran Church decided to make the most of the coincidence with the theme Lent means love. For the sixth straight year, the church held an Ash Wednesday drive through service over the lunch hour. There are needs that we can't anticipate in people's lives that make um, this possible for them to connect on such an important day. Lent is such an important journey of renewal and connection to our faith. And in case you haven't looked ahead on the calendar, Lent ends e with Easter, of course, and this year Easter will also coincide with another special day. April Fool's Day. So brace yourself, Alex, for that to come up in every sermon. Yeah, I feel like that could be right for pastors, <laughs> it right? It could be. <laughs> now to this week's standout student, someone who's leaving a positive impression inside the halls of Champlain Park High School. Senior Andre Hardy is well-rounded, smart, compassionate, and ambitious. Reporter Sonia Goins has more in today's standout student. I think we should just skip to page seven. Andre Hardy really stands out among his peers at Champlain Park High School. He and one other student are semi-finalists for a National Merit Scholarship. The practice SAT was scored out of 1520 and I got a 1480. He currently has a 3.93 GPA. He speaks French and is a member of the French Honor Society. He's also learning Italian. Those languages will come in handy considering Andre wants to study international politics. Hopefully um, I would love to be an ambassador, otherwise working at the UN or anything in that field. Chemistry and math are also high on his list. I like math because there's really just like one answer, and so I know either I got it right or I got it wrong. If I get it wrong, I can find the steps to fix it. When he's not hitting the books, Andre likes to get his creative juices flowing. He wants to go into acting or write a musical. The ambitious student has participated in several school productions. <laughs> 
and he plays several instruments. I play cello for the school and then I play guitar, bass, and ukulele. Andre says he wants to change the world by motivating others and it seems to already be working. I'm a very competitive person myself, so just trying to keep up with him and stay on his level um, is what motivates me. I don't know how he does it, but he's just so motivated himself that he just somehow manages to get everything done. The sky's the limit for this standout student. Every day could be a day that I look back at when I'm older and saying, wow, I really made something of that day. In Brooklyn Park, Sonia Goins, CCX News. Andre will find out in a few weeks whether he becomes a national merit finalist. Meanwhile, he has applied to a variety of Ivy League schools and he's leaning toward Columbia University. Still ahead, how economics became an unusually funny topic today for Armstrong students. But first, Maple Grove battles Blaine as the girls hockey playoffs heat up. John Jacobson has the highlights next. I'm John Jacobson. Maple Grove's girls hockey team split two regular season meetings with Blaine. Their third meeting of the season was to decide who would advance to the Section 5AA championship game. These teams meeting in the semifinals, early second period. Blaine's Kayla Blessy will turn here. And out front, Morgan Ryman with a quick shot at goal. And the Bengals out in front, one to nothing. Just over 30 seconds later, it's Blessy with the puck again. Her shot is stopped. Puck is cleared back out to Rachel Lentner, and she scores. The Bengals are up two to nothing. Maple Grove gets one back a few minutes later. Man and McMahon banks the pass out to Julia Pius. Her shot on that carries right to Lawrence Stensley, and it's a two to one game. That's the score after two, and for much of the third period, until Abby Jones gets free and a breakaway and scores here for Blaine. The Bengals win 3-1. They'll face Centennial for the 5AA title on Friday night. In Section 5A, top-seeded Breck meets Chicago Lakes in the semifinals. Mustangs buzzing the Wildcats net early. Carly Beenick scores. Breck's got a lead early in the first period. Later in the first, Emily Zumwinkle's shot deflects off the defenseman's stick, past the goalie and in, and the Mustangs have a 2-0 lead. A clean face-off win for Brax. Gabby Billing sets up a shot from the point for Ella Brophy, and she finds the back of the net, scoring her third goal of the season. It's 3-0 Brack after one. More of the same for the Mustangs in the second period. Allie Qualley intercepts the clearing pass and sets up Beanick for her second goal of the night. Brack goes on to skate to a 10-0 win. They'll meet Orono for the section championship Thursday night. In girls basketball, Cooper is closing in on another Metro West Conference title. The Hawks faced a conference and new section rival as they hosted Benilde St. Margaret's Tuesday. T.T. Logs dives for the loose ball, gets it to Asia Wheeler for the layup, and Cooper gets out to a 6-2 lead. But Benilde plays well early. Olivia Williams with a reverse layup here. It's part of a 10-point first half for her. Anna Whitfield hits a three as the Red Knights lead it 15-8. But Cooper responds with a 13-0 run. Andrea Tribble buries a three, and they go up 19-15. Jada Buford with a long three, and the Hawks take a nine-point lead into halftime at 28-19. The Wheeler sisters help them build on that lead. Asia nails a three as the lead grows to 12. And freshman Kiara Wheeler, tough to keep off the boards. She has 15 points in the second half, 19 for the game. Cooper wins for the 20th time this season, 57 to 41. The Maranatha Christian Academy boys basketball team came into Tuesday night on an eight game winning streak. They faced a tough challenge. Maranatha facing class 4 18 Minnetonka on the road. First half, Bijan Newbird gets the alley oop for the Mustangs in the early going. Late first half, Minnetonka's Gavin Patton drives and he gets the flush there. Skippers lead 37 35 at halftime. Second half, Tonka moves around to Patton, and the Skilber, Skipper's building a lead on the Mustangs, but Maranatha will answer with some good long-range shooting. Justin Mason from long distance there. Newburn gets a block that triggers this break. Then Lichtenberg to Mackay Hunt. Mustangs take a brief one-point lead. Minnetonka leads by three with under a minute to go. Lichtenberg hits a huge three, 78 all, and this one goes to overtime. Patton drives early in OT and hits for the Skippers. He leads all scores with 39 points. Ben Homeister wide open the corner, hits a three. Minnetonka goes on to win an 
It's section time in high school wrestling this week on our Sports Jam show on CCX. Jay Wilcox profiles the Maple Grove grapplers. Here's a clip from that story. Wrestling is struggling at a lot of schools in the area, with teams finding it difficult to fill a lineup and keep kids out. It's a grueling sport that's staying relevant at Maple Grove. We got a really good coaching staff. They believe in us, they push us, and just the, the overall mentality in here, everyone wants to win, we want to be successful, and that just drives us. We actually don't have great numbers this year, but the guys that we do have, to, to their credit, have have been hard working and, and have really improved throughout the course of the year and um, so it's it's really not about how many kids you have in the room it's about how many kids who who have desire and determination and, and commitment you have in the room and, and we have we have a lot of kids uh, that fit in those categories. Watch the rest of the Crimson Wrestling story and more on Sports Jam. It's on through Wednesday at 3.30, 6.30 and 9.30 p.m. and online at ccxmedia.org. That's all for sports. Shannon and Alex, back to you. All right, thank you, John. Still ahead, how it's possible to be both an economist and a comedian. And the supply of jokes really trickled down. Rim shot. We'll be right back. And finally, the subject of economics might not seem like a laughing matter. But don't tell that to the world's first and only stand-up economist who visited Armstrong High School today. You might be an economist if you've ever gone to a bank or other financial institution in the hopes of getting a date. <laughs> uh, if you plan to have your children born in December instead of January so that you can maximize the discounted present value of the child tax credit. And that was just the beginning. Yoram Bauman talks economics with college students and business people around the nation and is in town to talk to students at the U of M and Carleton College. He volunteered to talk to Armstrong economics students and make them laugh and learn too. Comedy is kind of a good way to sometimes provide motivation and get students interested in a topic and economics can certainly use some help. I'm just so thrilled that he could come here and, and kind of uh, show how economics can be, a, can be an interesting and fun thing to learn. And even though, you know, it's very funny, he did have some serious moments where he talked about how we can harness the power of capitalism to make things better and help the environment um, for the long term. I think Mr. Ruttlesheimer is a fan. Yes. And you can check out some of Yoram's jokes and his take on issues like taxes or greenhouse gas on his website, StandUpEconomist.com. So you might not see him on Comedy Central, but PBS NewsHour, that's it, where that's he'll his, be. He's been there. He has been there. Okay, yeah, that's so excellent. He had some good jokes. Just go to the website and check it out. They take a little bit longer to tell than we're allowed to have time on sure. TV. So it's worth it. But it's worth minutes. checking out. Yeah, <laughs> that's all the news we have for now. Thanks for joining us.